I'm gonna give you the five best lifts for you to get hypertrophic, and we're gonna start, right? Yeah. So we have to discuss all of the different types of hypertrophy. And that first type of hypertrophy is gonna be myofibrillar hypertrophy. So that's gonna be when we see an increase in myofibrils, okay? So this will increase the overall strength of a muscle fiber, of a muscle cell. And ideally you're gonna achieve this when you're doing rep schemes of like eight sets of six, seven sets of three to four reps. That's where you're gonna see that density really improve. You might see this in Olympic weightlifters or powerlifters to a point. And that takes us into the next form of hypertrophy, which will be sarcoplasmic hypertrophy. We'll see that muscle cells start to widen and get larger. And this might happen when we're doing three sets of 30 or three sets of 20. And you're getting that crazy pump like I'm getting right now in my biceps. That third type of hypertrophy is gonna be tendon or joint capsule hypertrophy. This is gonna be responsible for about 20% of the size that you're gonna see as you start to get bigger, as you start to gain that muscular mass. This happens when your muscles start to grow, when you start to have more mechanical load or mechanical tension, your body is aware of this and the GTOs and the muscle spindles trigger your body over a long period of time to stimulate different hormones. Okay, so your nervous system stimulating different hormones based off of the muscle spindles to tell your body, okay, we have to prepare for the future. We have to get a little bit bigger. We have to get a little bit more hypertrophic inside of our tendons so we can handle all this extra force. And when we see tendon growth or joint hypertrophy, okay, you're typically gonna see this from doing larger compound movements that lead to a lot of neural stimulation. We all see guys in the gym that wanna get big, they wanna get more muscular, but they're just doing the little things like bicep curls, tricep pushdowns, and those exercises are great, but they're never gonna lead to a ton of hypertrophic gains like we see when you do consistent back squatting, consistent benching, consistent pull-ups, consistent deadlifting. All of those movements are the keys behind hypertrophy because of the neurological stimulation. Okay, so we got our ZKC bar and plates. This bar was used at the Tokyo Olympics. Now, this movement is gonna be an exercise that everybody's gonna complain about. Nobody's gonna actually wanna do it, but if you do it, you're gonna get bigger. You're gonna get more hypertrophic. You will gain more muscle mass, and that's going to be a slow eccentric back squat. So if I'm here, right, I'm getting set. I wanna go one, two, three, four, up. oh my gosh, okay? One, two, three, four. Ugh. Now, one thing I wanna cue you on here is that when I'm getting set and I'm walking through this, I'm going down, okay? Let's say we do four sets of four and then we do two drop sets without the slow eccentric. But one thing we wanna think about is that as we're doing this, rotate our feet, okay? Rotate our feet and what that's gonna do is it's gonna get us to abduct our hips a little bit with our knees, okay? We can get right to just around the bottom, okay? We don't have to bottom out, but get close and then drive with that chest up. That's gonna help recruit more of the glutes. It's gonna help recruit, because we have a high bar position, more of our quads, and that's gonna lead to a little bit more hypertrophic gains in those regions. That control will also help you with your trunk. And if you can do this with like 60 to 90 seconds rest, you're gonna stimulate that massive neurological response which will help with myofibrillar hypertrophy and ideally also the release of those hormones so you can keep getting more swole. We use slow eccentric back squats. We use weightlifting movements inside of our app Peak Strength. I would put snatch and clean into a hypertrophic video, but a lot of people will complain about that. So use those exercises inside of our app peakstrength.app. So that second key exercise is going to be dips. There's very, very few exercises that are gonna get someone as yoked as a dip. People that have those little peas on the back of their arms, it's because they don't do dips. The best part behind doing dips is that your triceps make up a massive part of your arms. And if you can think about what do your triceps transfer to, okay? If we get really strong triceps, now we're gonna see a good improvement in our bench press we're gonna see a good improvement in our explosive push-ups, and that's gonna help us lead to that neural stimulation, which in turn is gonna make us more hypertrophic. So one of my favorite loading schemes with the dips is we might do nine reps, then seven, then five, and then we might come in and do a triple. I got this 150 on. We hit a good triple, now we have good neurological stimulation, and we go back up on this pyramid. 
So it's nine, seven, five, three. Okay, and we'll go five, seven, nine, and then finish 13 reps here because now you have that neurological stimulation. You have that myofibrillar hypertrophy. Ugh. And then you can finish that off with 13 reps. I don't know if I did 13, but you can finish that off with 13 reps to get a little bit more of that sarcoplasm into the muscular cell. So we're seeing density improve and strength improve and muscle size, ideally hypertrophy improve as well. Okay, so I'm gonna shock all the GS faithful out there. Everybody who watches this channel all the time, I'm gonna give you that one exercise that really leads to a lot of neurological stimulation and in turn, a ton of hypertrophic growth. And remember, this growth is gonna come from multi-joint movements, heavy weight, heavy load, and then focusing on, in some cases, larger muscles, okay? So if we're gonna talk about the posterior chain, we need to increase the strength in our back, our hamstrings, our glutes. That exercise is the deadlift. So I'm sure everybody out there is like, what, Dane is talking about the deadlift? So one of the things that I love to do is let's say you do four sets, okay, four or five sets, and we're gonna do doubles, all right? You work up four doubles, five doubles. Let's say in my case, I'm gonna work up to like 550, 600 pounds. In this case, we're at 210 kilos, so that's what, 460 pounds. Okay, we're gonna do something like that. We're over, over those sets, we're gonna build up and build up. So we'll go two heavy reps. Let's pretend this is my last set. Okay, so we go two. Boom, okay. Now let's pretend that's our last set, like I mentioned. Then what we can do, that was loud, to get a lot of hypertrophic gains and really play in both myofibrillar and sarcoplasmic ranges. We can rest about a minute, minute and a half. Okay, I like to put my straps back on. Now I'm down at like 355, okay? But I've got that good neural stimulation. Get set. Now I'm gonna rep out two sets of nine. I'm just gonna do one set of nine, but I like to do touch and go, okay? When I'm going heavy, I go back and forth. If I'm warming up, I might go touch and go until I get to that last set where I do reset both reps. But on the drop sets, when we're looking for that sarcoplasmic hypertrophy in our hamstrings and even in our lats when we're doing deadlifts, I will do touch and goes. And I think it's okay. A lot of people will be like, ah, oh. you know, as long as you're holding good form, staying driving through those heels, focusing on driving that chest up slightly, slightly, slightly rounded back, you will get good gains. <laughs> Nine reps of 160, rest about a minute and a half, and then we'll do that again. Oh, these are my garage strength straps, available at garagestrength.com. Now, piggybacking off of that last exercise, one of the best movements for hypertrophy that I love for that big back is going to be a seal row. And this is gonna be something interesting, okay? So this is how we have it set up. We were fortunate to get this bench off of Craigslist for about 90 bucks, okay? Extremely lucky. But what we ended up doing, and we did get this reformatted, we got this refitted, is that this bench elevates, okay? If you don't have access to this, there's two other things that you can do. You can get a normal traditional bench press and you can put bumper plates under it or boxes and that can help you set up for that seal row. I'll show you the second aspect a little bit after we demonstrate. So when we get set, all right, I like to put my feet right here on the bottom of the bench, okay? So I can get set. Now a lot of guys will do a seal row without actually having that support. But I like to get set here, okay? And we have a little bit of an area to drive them with our hips, okay? I want to engage my lats here and my traps. And so what's awesome with this movement is that we can work on that explosiveness, which is really hard to get when we're training our lats. We can also make it extremely heavy. We can just pile on weight and use this as a target point. And then we can do some crazy drop sets where maybe we take some of that weight off and we just hit 17 to 20 reps. This movement makes you freaking thick. It targets your biceps, it targets your lats, it targets your rear delts and your traps. So it's absolutely phenomenal for hypertrophic gains. Now, I'm gonna walk over here, I'm gonna demonstrate. Another way that you can do this is just by going into the gym 
and you can set up here on a dumbbell bench. You can change that height depending on what you want to do and do a chest supported row. Okay, so I'm here, boom, down slow. You go five sets, nine to 12 reps. And my main goal is that a lot of people like to do something like a bent over row, and I love bent over rows. They're absolutely great, or penle row, great exercise. But when you're doing a bent over row or a penle row, you start to use your hips a little bit more. You start to engage your hamstrings a little more. If we're doing a seal row or a chest supported row, you can't engage your hips as much and you don't put any stress on your lower back. It's all going onto your lats, your biceps and your rear delts. Okay, so another ringer that no one wants to use is the hack squat. And I'm included in there. I don't wanna use it either. But this is a lift that can lead to a ton of gains in your quads. And I'm gonna give you a sweet little finisher. So what I recommend is you get on the hack squat, you're in a commercial gym, you've got a leg press anywhere, okay? You can just go, first you need to actually do this, unlike what I just did. And we can go down, okay, nice and controlled, and drive back up. So let's say we hit seven to 10 reps, controlled back up, okay? Controlled and back up. I have no weight on this and my quads are already starting to get a little bit of a pump. Cause I got little tiny pump quads. Okay, so now we go, as we start to get a little bit more fatigued, just start to crank, okay? And the whole goal is that we set a timer, like 60 seconds, 90 seconds, something crazy, okay? And you just rep this out over and over again, basically until you can't move any further. I'm gonna do five more. This is where it's just like a freaking leg press, man. It just blows me up. Okay, so now I'm gonna rest about 20 to 30 seconds, and now I'm gonna head into my favorite finisher. After that hack squat, I'm gonna go into a sled pull and push. And so again, we're looking at hypertrophic gains. We're trying to get as much blood flow, as much stimulation as we can. It's a finisher. We're trying to grow those little quads, okay, with some unique exercises. So we hit that hack squat, rest 20 seconds. My quads are already dying. And what I would say is try and go another 60 seconds, pull back, push, pull back, push, pull back, push. And you can do that two, three times. You might be able to get that done in 10, 12 minutes. And it's probably gonna be the absolute hardest part of your workout. And it's probably gonna lead to the most hypertrophic gains. So what do we need to grow? We need big compound movements where you can push with some decent weight, okay? If you can push with some decent weight, you're gonna get a lot stronger. You're gonna have that neurological stimulation that leads to a release of hormones over time because of the mechanical tension that leads to greater myofibrillar hypertrophy or sarcoplasmic hypertrophy and that joint capsule hypertrophy. Those are all key factors. We also have to focus on our nutrition. Are we eating well? Are we sleeping really well? Those play a major role in actually getting more swole. And then ideally over time, we can use bodybuilding movements that are more isolation focused, like the tricep pushdowns or the bicep curls, anything like that, to sort of fix any small weaknesses that we have so that we can keep making bigger progress with those larger lifts, like the deadlift. And this is all stuff that we put inside of our brand new app, Peak Strength. It's available at peakstrength.app where you can get seven free days of programming. And on top of that, there's gonna be 35 different sports that we program specific to your goals and to your needs. We've got things like a rest timer, what weight you should put on, and how to periodize that over 16 to 20 plus weeks, whatever you need to achieve those goals. And for more sports specific content, make sure you check out our other channel, Peak Strength, because remember, Freaks, if you want to become a champion, you've always got to cultivate your power. Peace.